broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Hudson, the Solutions Architect at CISPRO Canada, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our live webinar, Why Food Manufacturers Shouldn't Ignore Compliance Automation. Today's session will be recorded, and everyone who registered will receive an email with a link to the on-demand version, as well as a copy of today's presentation slides. And if you're not already following us on social media, we'd love to connect with you on Twitter and LinkedIn. This session will run for about 45 minutes with time for questions at the very end. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit them through the questions panel on your GoToWebinar console, and we will address them towards the end of the presentation. I think most of you are familiar with CISPRO, uh, but you may not know that it has been designed so that it interacts with other purpose-built solutions to increase the value of your solution. While your ERP is your system of record and CISPRO specialization, our approach has been to partner and integrate with other leading vendors who are experts in their respective fields. Our partners have deep functionality in their systems that integrates with CISPRO to do some amazing things, such as warehouse management, including scanning and barcoding, manufacturing operations, e-commerce, business intelligence and corporate performance management, CAD integration, quality document management, and compliance automation. On the topic of compliance automation, I'd like to introduce you to our presenters, Steve McBride and Andy Pritchard. Steve is the co-founder and CEO of Weaver Apps, an innovative digital transformation software solutions provider. Steve has extensive experience in new product development, business management, and corporate sales. He has spent the last 30 years in manufacturing from maintenance, safety and production to automated processes and has deep understanding of industry processes. He's also kind of a nice guy. Andy is the marketing manager at Weaver Apps. He is a passionate marketing professional with a strong background in technology marketing. Welcome Steve and Andy. I'm going to pass it over to you now. Thanks Mike, much appreciated. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Steve McBride, as Mike said, co-founder of uh, Weaver Apps, and uh, we specialize in software for the manufacturing industry. We're based in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, and um, I'm gonna just go through a presentation here, and following my presentation, Andy's gonna take everybody through a demo of one of our software products. Great, thanks, Rod. So uh, we're gonna talk about uh, food safety regulatory compliance. So it is a good thing. And um, the reason it's a good thing is not only just for uh, compliance in your business, but in you know uh, the public as a whole. So we're contributing significantly, significantly to society, to society. And uh, it's very important that uh, we as manufacturers put out safe uh, products. And these protections are put in place so that they're, they're commonized, they're transferable, they're enforceable. So when you go from one company to another, they're, they're all the same, um, which is great because they're, they're put out by, uh, in Canada, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency in the US, the FDA and uh, European Union in, in uh, Europe. However, compliance is expensive. So set up an annual cost can be as high as 25% of your operating budget. Um, there's been several studies done where uh, just even a small and medium sized enterprise company average cost is 87,000 per year. And uh, FDA did a study and found that uh, the average uh, GMP compliance is about $184,000 per year. And some of those costs are mostly labor, but also capital equipment. Maybe you need, uh, you know, verification such as scales and things like that, um, materials, utilities, repairs and maintenance and so on. And compliance adds complexity. So the vast majority of compliance uh, experts think that 
uh, regulatory uh, activity is going to increase in 2019. And some of the types of food safety uh, compliance, uh, I'm sure you've all heard of HACCP. Um, and then just in general practices, you need uh, SOPs and documentation, sampling and testing, uh, training documents. Uh, you always need to have those in place in case there's an audit um, so that uh, the auditor can see if people were trained properly on the, on the, on the, the job that they're working at. And uh, through a Thompson Reuters study, 71% expect more regulations to be published soon. So compliance is not going away. And current software is under servicing the needs. 53% uh, of compliance man managers say the reporting system lacks the comprehensive views that they're, that they're looking for. And 75% say that it's lacking real-time visibility. So the current managers don't feel uh, that today's software is servicing their needs. We have an answer for that. We have a product called Process Manager, and Process Manager is really meeting those, those needs that the compliance and quality managers have. So real-time visibility of what's happening in your plant, which is really important. The customers that we talk to, um, that's one of the biggest factors in choosing us is that the real-time visibility is so important because they can get to issues faster, which can uh, help reduce waste and, and product recalls and other things. Process Manager has been designed to be FDA compliant, uh, which also falls into the CFIA. Uh, so there's many uh, standard integrity features, a lot around passwords and digital signatures, uh, how the electronic records are kept, um, how the servers operate, where all your data is for security, and then uh, user profiles as well. So making sure that only certain users can see certain things in the software. And then we also provide our customers with uh, computer system validation and user acceptance testing, which is in the old way, this was left up to the uh, client to do on their own, whereas we help uh, our clients with that. So comprehensive food safety and compliance management, uh, basically we say there's three steps. So basically you're configuring all of your processes in your plant. Uh, the second step is to execute, so you launch your processes and you carry them out on a, on a daily activity. And then three is reporting, so you can monitor what's happening in real time uh, in, in your uh, factory. And through that, you can see around the wheel, there's a lot of different things such as audit trails and reports and um, you know, different insights and charts and process templates and so on. So this is uh, what Andy's going to cover in the, in the demo. So the first one is configure. So this is where you take your current processes, what the, whether they be in Excel or paper or some other older software system, and you configure them into Process Manager. And this is where you can set up workflows for approvals and digital signatures and so on. So everything's all, all configured first. Once it's configured, then you can execute. So this uh, view right here is the live process view. So this is where you can see all of the open live processes in your facility. So it's very easy to sort through and see the percentage complete and what the next step is and who's responsible. And then the third step is reporting. So we have a very comprehensive uh, compliance management system that can show you all of the history of what's happened um, it tracks all of the changes made, who, who made the changes, when they were made. Um, and then you can also, not only is this software digital, but you can also download to PDFs as well. So if you're being audited, uh, you would be able to download all these PDFs with a full audit history trail along with it. Another real interesting feature we have is locking and unlocking fields with signatures. So a lot of times, a lot of other software, um, if you put in a digital signature and then somewhere down the line somebody uh, refuses something, it um, everything has to be redone uh, right from the beginning. Whereas ours, if something happens and somebody rejects something, basically what it does is it 
uh, removes all of the signatures. So it would have to go back through that workflow process to be reapproved. So the person that approved it first would have to reapprove it again. So some of the um, use cases for our product, uh, the number one use case is batch records. So in a process, uh, especially in uh, food, food and pharmaceutical manufacturing, usually the first step is compounding or mixing the batch. Um, so that would be the first step of the process. And then usually it would go to quality after that. And then uh, quality would approve it to go into production. And then while production's happening, there may be hourly checks with what's shown here. There's a hourly check uh, by production. So maybe you're checking the labels to make sure the labels are on properly and they're the correct labels. Uh, cap tightness, uh, um, uh, weights, uh, things like that. So all of these hourly, uh, usually hourly checks that are done. And then uh, it, it does all the checks right down to the case packing and out the door. So you have a full audit history of everything that's happened in that production. And then also if there's any issues along the way, um, this goes into um, an issue report where you can go back to later and see where all the issues were and you can flag it issues and have people notified uh, when they happen. So this is usually something that the quality managers are, are looking at when there's uh, issues on the line that they could be flagged and uh, take action on them. Uh, another use case uh, is corrective actions, preventative actions, CAPAs, um, things like that. So uh, quickly we can, through our software, we can help guide the process. So that's the whole thing is that if a CAPA needs to be done, uh, somebody's new at it, they don't have to know the entire process. They can just start the process and it will guide them through the process. Uh, HACCP and SQF, uh, very same thing. So you set up your HACCP and SQF uh, uh, processes and uh, our software will help guide, uh, guide you through the process. And all along that, there, there can be manager approvals, uh, documentation links. So people can, as they're going through the process, they can maybe pull up an SOP or read other documentation on the process. So SysPro and Process Manager, what is uh, we're going to do next is Andy is going to take over and do a demonstration. Um, this is going to be straight from our software, but uh, if this uh, was something that you would add it to you add to your SysPro product, uh, it would be a pane in SysPro, and you could just go to your homepage, uh, click on Process Manager, and go from there. So at this time, I'll uh, turn it over to Andy to do the uh, demonstration. Uh, thanks very much, Steve. Uh, this is Andy Pritchard, Marketing Manager at Weaver Apps. Um, as the uh, slide is showing here, we are going to demo um, basically the three steps of Process Manager, so configuring, executing, and reporting. So we'll go into how to digitize forms and build your processes, and then how your staff or your operators, uh, uh, batchers, uh, quality managers, maintenance managers, whomever, uh, interact with the processes and execute the processes, how they launch batch records, for example, and capture data, including uh, repeated checks, photos, signatures, and then how process issues are handled, as well as the after everything is executed, the activity reports, the form reports, and the audit trails that are available uh, for auditors. So, Trot, if you want to pass me the uh, presenter controls, I can get right into the demonstration. Okay, it looks like everyone can see this currently. Uh, so this is my screen here. I'm just going to hide my bookmarks. Um, so you can see um, this is the live process view. This is essentially the nerve center of the application. Um, so uh, anyone that has access to the application can come in here and view the current status and progress of any uh, process that's being executed within the facility. Uh, they can see the progress for each of the processes. So this one's 86% um, along with the progress bar. 
the next check on any repeated checks, the name of the next task and the name of the next step as well. Uh, they can see the owner of the next uh, task, so production. These are roles, uh, compounding, uh, management. Uh, the line and work area that the uh, that the process is being executed on, when it was created, who it was started by, and when it was last updated. They can filter this report uh, entirely by um, line slash work area. Uh, so, for example, if I'm the operator on line three, I can just keep this as my view, and this shows me all of the processes that are being executed on my on my line, um, and then go back up to um, all lines and work areas to view the entire facility. So this really offers that or answers what Steve was saying, that real-time visibility and, and recency of, of information that's available to you. So anyone within the facility can see uh, where you're at with any of the processes and really get into each of them, uh, ask questions of operators, uh, be alerted of issues and so forth. So staff, when they're ready to launch a new process, say a batch record process, they simply go to new process. And there's a number of pre-existing templates that process manager comes with. Uh, these are all the categories, including maintenance, quality, safety. Uh, we'll click on quality and then batch record process. And here's the summary information that is um, completely configurable by you uh, by, as an administrator. And it asks the operator to enter certain information uh, that's going to be tied to every single form that is filled out as a result of this process. So we'll add in here a total batch weight, a batch code, a product description, tank number, uh, the line slash work area, we'll say M3, uh, date and time of production, and then a finished goods number. So here's a summary of the information that I've added. And when I go to launch process, uh, you can see here all of the summary information is at the top of the process. We're 0% complete. And the process is um, comprised of a number of steps and tasks. And each task uh, includes the task name with a link to the form that shows the required fields uh, that need to be filled out to uh, initiate a task. Uh, the status of the task, which can be updated, um, the owner, the role that owns the task. So this is the uh, the role of the user, only compounding uh, users uh, that, that are associated with the compounding role can execute this task. So they can click on this link and uh, view the status. And you can see all of the uh, tasks that are required to complete this entire process. So how does all of this get created? So before we go into the execution of this, let's look first at um, digitizing forms. So the first step in building um, out any of these processes is digitizing forms. Uh, you can use a form builder for this, um, or you, you do use the form builder for this. Um, instead of building a new one from scratch, we'll just look at the poultry inspection that we built for a customer just yesterday. Um, so this includes uh, a type of evaluation, sort of basic fields like multiple choice, uh, check boxes. Some of the more um, interesting and detailed form fields that we have include photo capture, uh, where you can upload uh, photos. You can also use the device's native uh, camera uh, to take photos right on the spot and, and add them to any report at any time. Um, there's automated calculations as well. This is a very simple one here for FS3. Uh, this shows, um, the automated calculation here shows that uh, I wanna add the count of this uh, inspection as well as this inspection. And uh, with uh, automated calculations, you can see the basic uh, math operations. I can add a number of different number fields here. Um, and I can even add constants as well. So if I want to divide this, if I wanted to divide this by 100, for example, tool um, that you can use to basically create any uh, automated calculation that you require. Um, another uh, um, field that I'll bring to your attention is the name and signature field uh, that you can name using a label. 
Um, part of FDA compliance and CFIA compliance is having a meaning of a signature so people know exactly what their signature means. It could be meaning that you simply just reviewed the, the specific form data, or you re reviewed and approved it, or you just want to say that it was collected properly. And one thing that's unique about our solution as well is that I can identify the specific fields that are locked as the result of this um, this signature. So only these fields will be locked, for example, and the other fields may be locked uh, and approved uh, by another signature that I set up as well. So there are a number of different fields um, that are within the form builder. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but as you get into it, you'll realize that basically any information that you need to capture, including uh, file up files, um, any of the data sources that we have, um, date and time and so forth can all be uh, captured with this number checks as well. Uh, there's a lot. Another field that I'll bring to your attention as well is an info box. Now an info box is a, a very handy tool uh, that allows you to provide information to your user in the context of the form. So when they're ready to execute this, instead of training them before and making sure that they have all the information, um, you can simply uh, add the information to the form in the form of say, I'll just add a video here. I'll embed a, a video, and there's the video. Um, I can also add text and any images that I'd like. So you can really build out, and some of our customers have gone really deep into um, building out sort of a, a library, a resource, if you will, of information. Um, and this doesn't have to be at the top of the form. It can be anywhere where you just want to refresh the user on the correct process, the correct uh, implementation to make sure that they get it done correctly the first time and every time. So once we digitize the form or multiple forms, um, in the case of the batch record uh, process that I'm going to take you through, I believe there's over 10 forms that get filled out as a result of that and sometimes repeated so that they're filled out every hour or so uh, throughout the course of the process. Once we complete the forms, then we go to building the process. So I'll take you through the, um, here's all the uh, categories. I'll go into quality and take you through that poultry example as well, because it's very simple. So basically what the customer wants to do is, um, is uh, report on, the, on defects. So do a poultry inspection that reports on defects. So they want their, um, their operators to pull off samples of poultry and then uh, fill out the form and they want them to do it every hour. So the way that they set this up is they say, I want to name this task, take samples and complete inspection. I want the, uh, to, I'm gonna select the form, the poultry uh, carcass dressing uh, defects log that uh, we just uh, went through. And I'm gonna assign this to chicken production. So only people who have the role of chicken production uh, can execute this task. Um, uh, just a note that uh, users can have multiple roles, so and you control roles that are within the application. So it's very, very flexible on how you configure that. Uh, you can have chicken production, chicken production supervisor, chicken production manager, and you know have one person have all three of those roles if you wanted to. I'm going to make this repeatable. I'm going to say I want this to be repeated every one hour and the first update starts after an hour. And now I'm gonna, uh, the, the application will uh, fetch all of the form fields that are part of that form. So you see the field name here, and I can identify the specific fields that need to be completed. So I know that um, all of the evaluations need to be completed, but maybe the photos, because the, the, I'm asking for a photo to be taken only if it's rejected, um, they don't need to be completed in order to complete the, uh, the, the inspection. So I'll just go through here and select all of the uh, form fields that are required. Um, maybe not the photo. And then not the rejection comments, but definitely want to uh, do all of the evaluations and inspections. Here, and then we're done. So now continue this, and you can see here all of the different uh, tasks or fields that are required for this task, and I'll update task. 
Now, what if I wanted to add another task that's about approvals? I wanted to approve each one of these inspections. Well, I can either add it to the same step uh, or I can just add another step called approvals. And this essentially is just a collection of tasks um, that make it easy to understand sort of the major steps that occur along the execution of a process. I'll call this inspection approval. Now, instead of starting a new blank form, what I want to do is update an existing submission. So this poultry inspection form here that's being used in the task, take sample and complete inspection, is the one that I want to update. And I'm going to assign this to our quality people. And I'm going to say, yes, I want this to happen every hour as well. And then the only field that's required here is quality review. So I'll create that task. Now I've updated this, um, this, this um, uh, process uh, template. Uh, you can see here it now is a new version number. So if I go to um, new processes, I can find that. But let's go back to, um, let's go back to the batch record uh, process here. So if I go back into quality and then search for batch record, or I can just find it right here and then edit, you can see here, I'll scroll through this sort of slowly because I know there's a bit of a lag. But you can see here that there's a step uh, for compounding and all of the tasks associated with compounding. Then a step for quality to approve uh, the first pass and then production to gather the information uh, before quality does a final approval and then the production run. And you can see for the production run, for example, you know, every six hours they want to do a manufacturing procedure check it involves this form, uh, and there's certain fields that are required to complete that task. Um, another one I'll bring to your attention is label verification, uh, where you know I'm updating an existing submission here for, uh, for the label APDO verification form that's being used in these tasks. It's happening every six hours by the rule production. I'll continue. And there's four tasks, four fields that are required to fill out as a result of this task. So it's very simple to do. Uh, we can help you with this as well. And uh, so now that we've gone through sort of the configuration, which is building, digitizing forms, and then creating the processes by which each form is filled out. And you can see there's multiple forms here that are called upon, and it's, they're repeatable as well. Let's go back to our original example here uh, where we've uh, initiated a process. And again, the way that we did that was we went in the live processes view, we just simply hit new and then selected the batch record process and then filled out the process summary, which is here. So all of this information is tied to every single one of the forms uh, that are filled out. So our first step here, assuming that I'm compounding, I'm actually administrator, so I have access to everything within the app. But if I'm compounding, I'll receive an alert, an action required alert that will say, hey, a batch record process has just started and you're up. So I can set this to in progress, which will happen automatically if I click this anyway. And now I'm in the form view. So I can see this is the bulk product reconciliation form. I'm in the task of bulk reconciliation. And here's the process overview. And here's some uh, data about the process ID, submission ID, and so forth. So I can add comments, I can view a comprehensive activity report on this specific task. Um, and any comments that I add are available um, for other uh, users to view, anyone that's watching this task. So if I, the status that I can add here is not required, which means this task isn't required, let's move on to the next one. In progress, which is what we're at now, critical issue, which marks this as red and immediately alerts quality and whomever else is watching uh, this process, that there's a critical issue here that needs to be solved. In which case, uh, mostly the, the messaging can be used to solve it right there on the production floor. And then done. And done basically means that this task is completed and the ne next task, the owner of the next task will be alerted that they're, uh, they're required, uh, their activity is required. Now, if I try to hit done without filling out these required fields, it says, hey, you're almost done, but you still have to complete some of these fields in order to do that. So if I come, I'll add the size, I'll select the shift, uh, add an initial scale weight, some process loss, maybe a bit of scrap gain, 
uh, a bit of a uh, final scale weight. And then this automated calculator here has saved me a bit of time by automatically um, adding up this calculation here as well. So if I scroll through now this, this uh, form, I can see that there's no other information that's re required to complete this task. And when I save this task, the system is smart enough to know that you've completed everything. Let's mark this as done. So now the next person up is compounding, so that's me again. So let's go to, go to prefill pass. I'm gonna mark this as in progress and then add some neuter process order number, the um, uh, uh, fragrance material number, the batch code, uh, the initial weight, and the fragrance material number. So now, before I do that, I just want to introduce this. This is, um, I've opened up a staff profile here uh, to show you what happens with uh, the action required. So this is uh, using a different browser. It's Safari, and this is in Chrome. So this theoretically doesn't know anything about what's happening here. Um, this John Smith uh, profile is a quality manager, uh, and he currently has zero action required. And you'll see here that the next uh, task uh, after pre-fill pass, so once I hit save here, is a quality task. So it's going to say, hey, do you want this to be marked as done? Great, now it's just updated the uh, progress to 6% from 3%. And if I flip over here, now there's an action required. Now, John Smith, if um, in his user profile, he has his notification set to, yes, I want to be notified. So he'll actually receive an email uh, to let him know that there's an action required for him. Uh, when he clicks here, he can just view the, um, the, batch, the batch record process and go directly there. Now, you can see here that the, as a staff member, uh, he doesn't have the same access that administrators have in the sense that he can view that this compounding, ta compounding task has been done, but he can't interact with the status. And he can view the form and the information that's been collected to date. And he can even view the audit trail as well and the activity reports. So he's fully aware of what's happening, but he can actually interact with this form because he doesn't have the permission to do so. But he can interact with the quality uh, fields. So in this case, it's asking for a signature. He'll simply go down here, review the information. This all looks in order. Looks like they want a lot number. And then he's gonna add a signature. So he'll look himself up, uh, sign here. And now he's required to actually re-authenticate, which is another CFIA uh, requirement. And I don't know if I, if I, no. Here, let's try this again. I'll try and do it without talking. Let's see. Kidding. Hmm. Seems you have uh, forgotten the password. I'll try one more time. Okay, I was just, it's a bit cold in here and I was typing it wrong. Um, so you can see here that it shows the signee's name, the email address, uh, submission information, the meaning of the signature, and the exact uh, information that's going to be locked as the result of the signature. If there, if there was change, there'd be a complete audit trail here as well. So I'll go ahead and record this signature. And then there's another signature here as well. So I'll add this. And Andy Pritchard is actually representing the laboratory in this case, and then save the information. And again, it understands that that's completed and done. So now, um, now I'll mark this uh, this as done, and you can see that the um, quantity has has uh, gone up by eight percent. Sorry, the progress meter has gone up by eight percent, which shows live in the live process as well. So you don't actually have to refresh uh, this live. It's automatically um, as um, as uh, the live processes are being updated. 
So let's go back into the uh, batch record process and we can review um, uh, some other sort of features of uh, the execution. So we have here that uh, label checks are required. So we have a label verification. It's due every six hours. If I tap this to in progress, or if this, if the fragrance check is marked as done, either way the timer will start counting. So the timer is now counting down from uh, six, six hours. When it gets to zero and um, it's overdue, the timer is overdue, it'll turn red and start counting up. And you'll see uh, that there are some overdue processes that require your attention. So when I go into label verification, I can see here that a required field is the shift and then a photo upload is required. Now in this case, I'm just going to uh, add this from my desktop and here's a photo. Uh, but as I mentioned before, if you have it on iPads or any other type of tablet, um, it, uh, the application accesses your native uh, camera uh, automatically. And then a, a material number as well is added here. And lot order number, and then save. So again, it understands that uh, this uh, is, um, task is, is completed and it begins the countdown for the next task. And then there is a um, label verification um, approval step as well. So here we have the information that has been um, submitted just now. And then I'm gonna go ahead as the QA person, review this information and sign off uh, to complete it. So now you can see that this, uh, these fields are locked. And when I hit save, I can mark this, um, this task as completed. And you can see at the bottom here, the task is now marked as completed. Now, in a lot of cases with, other, with competitive products, um, if I wanted to make any changes there it would be uh, a problem. Uh, but in our case, uh, we have a comprehensive audit trail. So it's no problem if administrators or supervisors uh, wanna go back in uh, they can mark uh, the task as in progress, click on label verification, and then go back in, uh, view the, uh, click on locked, and then just unlock the field, and then make any changes they need to make. So they can even remove the photo, um, add a new photo if they want to, I believe this was the new photo, uh, update the shift information and so forth. And then when they go ahead and re-sign, um, all of that information will be locked again. So now when we talk about audit trails, we're really talking about uh, the ability of an inspector to be able to view uh, when the information was captured, by whom it was captured, and if it was changed, basically everything that's happened through the execution of this manufacturing process. Uh, so the quickest way to view that is to download the uh, process report. And the process report shows all of the data associated with the process summary. So all of that information that we added at the beginning shows all of the forms that are filled out that are included in this pa package. And then each form, all of the information that's associated with that form. So each field has a value that's timestamps uh, submitted by user and then the email address to the user. So if I click to find the label uh, AP form, you can see here that the information that was uh, for the shift was two and then locked and then changed to three. And even the, uh, the photo that was um, added was this at one point and then we, upload, we updated it to this photo after the fact. So as an auditor, this is great because it makes it really easy uh, for auditors to inspect and view uh, the information that's being uh, collected. And this works uh, just as well for document approvals too. So you can go through an entire history of the documents that have been um, added, and then the, the most recent that has all the signatures associated to it. So when we talk about, so we talked about, we talked about execute, let's move on to reporting. Uh, and reporting is, is done mostly through uh, form reports, 
uh, activity reports, uh, API, uh, as well as data visualization. So the um, first one that we can talk about is the activity report. So each live process that is executed um, has a comprehensive activity report that's included as a, as a PDF as well. Uh, but it shows at the process runtime and everything that's happened uh, within this process. Um, and again, this is documented as a report, uh, so it can be shown to auditors. You can show details of specific things that have happened and changed. Uh, so it's everything that's happened within a process, within a task, within a form is documented with activity reports. Um, also, form reports collect all of the information associated to a form. So this is that AP uh, label, AP DO verification form. And you can see here that each uh, submission is a row and each um, uh, field is represented uh, by a column. Um, so all the information is captured here. It can be downloaded. It can be pushed through a REST API uh, to SysPro. Uh, and other business systems that you use. Uh, it's your data, it's hosted on the cloud, but it's available to you at any time, and uh, you can download it, you can uh, use it as you see fit. And then also if you uh, go to show details here as well, uh, you can see the complete audit trail that's happened uh, with this one particular uh, submission of this one particular form, uh, where you know I uh, reviewed it and then I removed my signature and then I added a new signature and I changed these different fields uh, as a result. I can also download a copy of this as well as uh, email a copy to a user within the application. So that's uh, an overview of uh, Process Manager and how it works. Um, I think I'm passing the uh, ball back to SysPro and Mike and Sherrod to see if there's any questions. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Andy. That was awesome. Uh, every time I see this, I get so excited uh, just because I keep seeing more and more applications where, where this solves real-life problems. Um, while we're just waiting, uh, giving the audience a few more minutes to add in questions, um, I know for the viewers, seeing all this stuff for the first time, there's a lot of information to absorb. Um, but some of the things that uh, every time I see it again, I, I pull out more information. But the, the, the unbelievable benefits that this has uh, above and beyond the uh, classic uh, pen and paper or even spreadsheet methods that uh, QA typically uses today in their real life environments um, astounds me. Steve, in, in, earlier in the presentation, uh, related to the cost uh, of how much that actually uh, really is costing companies. But what I find when I'm dealing and, and talking about this with our customers is that they don't really realize how much it is. It, it's just the cost of doing business. Um, but when you look at a direct comparison in what they're doing pen and paper spreadsheet based compared to what the power of uh, a solution like yours has uh, just with you know how easy it is to design your forms um, uh, and, and other things that you you highlighted in there the automatic versioning uh, when a new form is updated and what that translates to from a, a time and cost savings in the paper-based version of what realistically has to happen. They have to go around and find all of the old versions, make sure they're not on the floor or in anybody's clipboards, make sure they're destroyed and the new versions, like just, just that as an example. Um, but then we're all familiar with, you know, the paper says, I got to do these steps and they might not be, uh, but this, this ensures that they are and that they're timestamped when they are done. Um, the ability to do data validation. So, uh, and the, you know, like this, this is supposed to be a number field, so it will do that. Just all of these things that uh, uh, are improvements above and beyond that uh, uh, make the solution overall better is, are, again, just things that I find are amazing that a lot of people, uh, when they first look at it, might not get it if they're not really familiar with how their processes go. 
The other is just adapting to their business. I know the examples that we, we tend to focus on are on the food and beverage side, but pretty much every manufacturer on the planet has a QA uh, process where they have to, you know, check manufacturing. Did they really do uh, uh, and produce to the quality that the, the company demands? So it has application in all manufacturing areas, not just food and beverage um, uh, that we like to use as the, the classic use case. Um, anyway, I could ramble on forever. Uh, let's get to a, a couple of the questions uh, that have come in. Um, uh, uh, the first one, uh, how, did, how would CAPAs work in Process Manager? Steve or Andy? Sorry about that. I had a bit of a problem getting unmuted. Um, Kappas are uh, an interesting uh, process um, because you really don't want to execute them generally from a regulatory perspective. Um, as soon as you execute a Kappa, it becomes um, it becomes part um, it becomes information that the government um, can request. Um, so we have set up a template here um, that is actually just in a different. Uh, demo environment called non-conformance issues uh, process. And it's under uh, non-conformance. And essentially it allows um, uh, operators to go through a quick compliance audit or quick corrective action uh, before initiating a CAPA. Uh, so it asks for operators to identify the problem and if this problem can be resolved uh, with a quick uh, correction, um, and gets the right people involved in collaborating on a solution uh, before uh, they go through a risk assessment process where they essentially score uh, the um, score the issue as to, uh, based on frequency and impact as to uh, whether a kappa is required. Uh, so the the big benefit of this is it saves a lot of time, but it also saves. Um, the, uh, the, the organization from executing a kappa if it's not required because kappas can be uh, um, a huge a huge amount of um, work and is also uh, governed under a lot of regulatory uh, sort of compliance uh, challenges that make things more costly and more complex. Awesome, thanks. Um, uh, so you showed us, I know you showed us this, but there's another question I think it has a, a bit more focus on a particular area. Uh, how do I audit critical control points? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned before, um, uh, process manager is, is highly flexible and configurable. So you can set up forms and processes to collect information on basically anything that you want. We have a number of different templates and our, our list of templates is growing um, as we are creating uh, sort of uh, forms, digitizing forms and processes for customers. Uh, we'll genericize and create a sample template and add, add to that. One of the templates that we have is, is about HACCP critical control points and really managing uh, the safe quality food designation, uh, being able to, because uh, SQF is, is a HACCP based protocol. Um, it allows you to do a number of things within that. Basically through SQF, you create uh, a number of different standard operating procedures that need to be followed that identify uh, when something needs to be audited, what its con critical control point is, uh, what needs to be monitored, how it needs to be monitored. And then you can set up a, a cadence of uh, inspections uh, through Process Manager that essentially govern that process. So in this case, you've got um, a way to identify contr critical control points, um, add monitoring procedures, add deviation procedures, and verification uh, procedures, and then add all of the approvals that you need to create a document that is essentially a standard operating procedure that identifies uh, the control point and and everything that needs to be done to control it. And then you can go ahead after that and create the form that needs to be filled out, the inspection form that needs to be filled out and the process that needs to be completed um, uh, by, by whomever. 
Okay, great. Uh, the system is, is very flexible uh, to cover off those issues. Okay, excellent. Uh, all right, and here's someone who's thinking outside the box. Uh, can we use this for other processes that have standard forms and needs approvals like project management or capital project approvals? All right, just on mute again there. Can you repeat the question, Mike? Sure. Uh, can we use this for other processes that have standard forms and need approvals like project management or capital project approvals? Yeah, absolutely. Um, those types of uh, processes are very simple to govern. Um, they use uh, uh, digital signatures in a lot of cases to um, manage the approvals process, the cadence of the approvals process. Um, you can use a form to create the document with the terms uh, that are uh, required to be completed and an audit trail that shows um, all of the different forms and how they're updated and then an approvals process um, uh, that's governed by process manager. So it's, as mentioned before, it's a highly, highly flexible and configurable solution that can be used for uh, you know, a variety of different uh, business process management tasks, uh, including governance, risk, um, and compliance uh, um, requirements. And you, we initially built it for quality and compliance automation, uh, but it seems uh, as we're going forward that there's just so many different uses. Our customers are, are finding all different uses for um, the different things that they can, they can manage with Process Manager. Yeah, just, just to build off of that, Mike, um, we actually just got an order yesterday for one of our customers is going to use it for project approvals. So they have this very complex process. Again, um, it has nothing to do with quality or safety or anything else. Mostly we've been talking about quality today, but it's project approval. So they need to fill out the same 10 forms for every project. They have to do an environmental study and they have to do a cost analysis and so on. So they have all of these uh, forms that they need to fill, be filled out. They need to be filled out by certain people with certain roles. They need to be assigned, they need to be signed off on, and they need to know where each of these project approvals stand. Um, so like who who's holding the ball right now? So now they can just go to the live process view and they can see all of the open project approvals, who it's waiting for approval on, and what the next steps are and when it's completed they can start the project so um, totally different use case from quality um, but the customer um, saw the software they thought it would be a good fit so we took all of their uh, current processes and forms we did a demo for them and uh, it basically fits perfect for what they're doing so yeah it can be used for a lot of things outside of quality Okay, great. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, all right, so uh, there's no more questions that have uh, come in. Um, <clears throat> so for those of you that are still on the line, you have a couple of seconds to, to throw one in if you would like. Um, but assuming not, uh, again, thank you, Steve and Andy, for a great presentation. I, as usual, find it very informative. Hopefully, uh, the audience has as well. Um, just a reminder for those that have joined, um, uh, we will be making the link available for it. Our contact information uh, for both Weaver Apps and CISPRO is up on the screen. Uh, if you'd like further information, please don't hesitate uh, to contact us and we'd be more than happy to uh, go over how the solution can potentially help you more uh, as time goes on. Again, thank you very much everyone for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Take care.